the video on this series concerning normal distributions. The idea here is in the previous two videos, you learned about these calculator functions, the normal CDF function and the inverse norm function. Uh, most students can kind of grasp them okay when they see them isolated. Like when you're in the normal CDF section, all the questions use normal CDF, so it's easy enough to figure out the inputs. But what typically ends up happening on an exam is you're just given some problems and you're not told which calculator function to use. And that's where, in my experience, students really struggle. They try to use normal CDF where inverse norm is appropriate or vice versa. So the idea in this video is really to be able to take a problem without knowing which calculator function to use and figure out which calculator function to use. Um, so that's what I'm getting at here. The, in my experience, the best way to tell the difference is thinking about, are you being asked for the area underneath the curve? Is that what the question is asking you for? Or in the question, is it already telling you the area underneath the curve? And what's problematic is it's not going to say the area under the curve is blank, right? It's not going to tell you that. It's going to say, it's going to give one of the two interpretations of the area underneath the curve. So these guys that have been hitting that over and over again on these videos, that the area underneath the curve means one of two things. It either tells you the probability that one observation is in that range, or it tells you the proportion of all observations that are in that range. So let's get to an example. Um, suppose the volume of a dog's loudest bark, here's my dog right here, this is Hector, he's awesome. Uh, suppose the volume of a dog's loudest bark is approximately normally distributed. Yeah, 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 that means I can draw this shape that I've been drawing over and over again, this symmetric bell shape. And in the middle of this distribution goes the mean, the population mean. We have the symbol mu for that. So mu equals 80, that goes right here. And then the standard deviation is sigma, the population standard deviation. And that's 10 in this problem. So if I were to count up by 10s, I could do it now, 90, 100, 110, and then count down by 10s, do both three times to draw your picture. However, as you start to get more sophisticated in here, you kind of stop counting up and down by 10s. Um, because if it's an inverse norm type question, you don't know what the answer is. So you can't draw the picture until you know the answer. Anyways, let's just follow along. Okay, so for this first one here, my dog Hector's bark was recently recorded at 88 decibels. What percentage of dogs bark louder than Hector? So this is going to think about this first. This is this a normal CDF or an inverse norm question? Are they asking me for an area or are they telling me an area? Hint, when they are asking you for an area, the phrase what percentage of or what is the probability that is commonly used. So you're often going to use normal CDF when you hear what percentage of. Or what is the probability that. And it won't always be exactly those things, but when they're kind of getting at that idea. And why are those kind of the two key phrases? Well, because those are the two interpretations of the area under the curve. So if it asks you what percentage of these observations are in that range, they're asking you to find this area in the second one. They ask you what is the probability that they're asking you to find the area as specified in this first one. Anyways, there's your hint. What percentage of that tells me I'm going to be using the normal CDF function on my calculator. Uh, I want to know what percentage of dogs bark louder than Hector who barks at an 88. So I throw 88 in my picture, maybe right here, and I'd shade above it. It's worth pointing out because this is a normal CDF question, you could count up and down by standard deviations right off the bat, 80, 90, 100, 110. Because by the time you get to shading the picture, you already know this boundary here. That's not the case when you're doing inverse norm. Anyways, figure out this area. We're using normal CDF. It's always the lower bound, then the upper bound, then the center, then the spread. The lower bound, as you can see here, is 88. That's where I started shading. Right? That's the lower bound to the shaded part. The upper bound, there is no upper bound. Because I don't say what percentage of dogs bark between 88 and 93 decibels or something. Just say greater than 88. Whenever you're missing an upper bound, you just put in some arbitrarily large number. You can use any large number you want. I typically use a bunch of nines. Most teachers typically use scientific notation. And they write like E99 here, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then I want the center and the spread, which in these problems, in every problem we've seen so far, and this will change in the very next video, the center and the spread have been mu and sigma respectively. So I'd get an 80 and then I'd get a 10. And if I type that into my calculator, it's gonna spit out this area for me and that'll be the answer to the question. If you type that into a calculator, 
uh, you got to remember where the normal CDF function is. Uh, conveniently, it's in the same menu that the inverse norm function is. It's under the distribution menu. Think normal distribution should be in the distribution menu. We hit second and then variables to get in there. Go down to normal CDF, the only two you'll use, normal CDF and inverse norm. Under normal CDF, my lower bound is 88. My upper bound, some arbitrarily large number, use whichever one you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, my center is 80 and my spread is 10. If you have this version of the software, it'll ask you those four questions. If you don't have this version of the software, it'll just pop up as normal CDF on your screen. And then you gotta type in those four arguments with commas in between them. Hit enter, it spits out a number. A number 21.19% if I round to two decimal places. Or if I format it as a percentage and then round to two decimal places. That's the answer to the question. Um, contrast that with this next one. This next one says, how loud must a dog bark? It's not asking me what percentage of dogs or what is the probability that a dog would bark louder than some amount. It's not asking me that. It's not asking me for the area. It's saying, how loud must a dog bark? My answer is going to be a number that would show up down here below this entire picture. It's asking me for decibels, not for area. How loud must a dog bark to be in the 90th percentile in terms of bark volume? Well, here you actually need some prerequisite knowledge. Hopefully earlier on in your class, you guys defined percentiles. Uh, the 90th percentile is defined to be the point such that the area below that point is 90%. So when they say the 90th percentile, they're saying find the point so that the area to the left of that point, below or to the left, however you want to think about it, is 90%. If it was the 70th percentile, the area to the left would be 70%. It's always the area to the left when we're talking about percentiles. Given to me in the problem is this area. And that's a little bit of a hint. I said hints when you're trying to use normal CDF, what percentage of, or what is the probability that. When you're trying to use inverse norm, it won't always use the phrase percentiles or the term percentiles, but when it does, odds are you have an inverse norm question. Uh, I need to find this, vol this number right here. Typically, you put the center in your picture, although you don't have to. Note that I don't want to count up and down by tens right now, because right now I don't know what this number is, so I don't know if it should be between 90 and 100, or between 100 and 110, or 110 and 120, and so on. So just leave it out. Find this by using the inverse norm function in your calculator. Inverse norm always takes three arguments. The first argument in my version of the software is always the area to the left of this point. So conveniently, we know that it's 90%. You always format it as a decimal, not as a percentage. Then it wants the center and the spread, which remain 80 and 10 as they were in the previous example. Type that into your calculator. So again, inverse norm is under the distribution menu, second then variables. It's the third thing listed here. It wants the area below, or the area to the left if you want, and then 80, and then 10. And in case you're wondering, area below meaning less than 90, so 90s or 80s or 70s, but that can be confusing. I try not to use that phrase because some people might think I mean below this curve right here. So I try to say the area to the left. But my teacher always taught me is the area below this point, meaning to the left of this point. So sometimes just out of habit, I say area below. But to try to be less confusing for students, I'll talk about below this curve or to the left of this point. So here, this wants the area to the left, which is 0 0.9. Type all that in, and your calculator spits out your answer for you, 92.82. I might have already done that problem. I don't remember up in the inverse norm section. But the key thing here is not to understand these arguments or to get this number even. It's to understand why 1 was normal CDF and why 2 was inverse norm. And if you got that out of this, that's exactly what we're going for in this video. In case you're not sure about that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you two more questions. And guess what? One was going to be normal CDF and one is inverse norm. And the idea is can you look at these two and tell which is which? So we're going back to offensive tackles and their weight. Fine. Um, and they weigh, on average, 270 pounds, and their weight's approximately normal. So it's sort of the same picture that I've been drawing. And as long as I'm here, I'll do it for both of these. Why not? I'm going to draw it twice. And let's take on both of these at the same time. One says, someone's interested in starting a small league where only the lightest 15% 
of all offensive linemen are allowed to play. What is the maximum amount that a tackle can weigh to be in this league? In other words, what is the weight? So not a percentage, not a probability. What is the weight that somebody has to be less than if they want to be considered small, if they want to be in the smallest 15%? Contrast that to how likely is it that? How likely is it? That's synonymous with what is the probability that? one of our key phrases. How likely is it that an offensive lineman weighs less than 220 pounds? They're giving me the bounds here and they're asking for an area. Up here, they're giving me an area and they're asking me to find one of the bounds. So this first one's inverse norm and the second one's normal CDF. So I want the lightest 15%. So here's someone who weighs 270 pounds, lighter than that person would be someone to the left of that person. So I want some amount somewhere over here. I don't know what it is. But what I do know is lighter than this person would be to the left of this person. This area right here is 15%. I want to figure out what this weight is. I'm going to use inverse norm. Inverse norm, as we've seen, always takes three arguments. Um, yeah, I guess this works. I kind of wish this was a problem that gave you, that, I wish it said the heaviest 15%. So if the area it gave you was on the right side of the distribution, then you had to say, well, then 85% is to the left. But if you are if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch that inverse norm video because that's where you really learn how to use the inverse norm function. In this video, the goal isn't really to teach you the inverse norm function, it's to help you differentiate between that one and the normal CDF one. Anyways, inverse norm, 0 0.15, that's the area to the left of this point, center, spread. Type that into my calculator. Uh, the area to the left is 0.15. Center and spread are 270 and 30, respectively. I hit enter. 238.91. That kind of makes sense, right? If the average weight of these offensive linemen. I think it used to be offensive tackles. Maybe I should have made this tackles. But I'm sure you're not concerned at all. Anyways, uh, if the average weight is 270, that means 50% of people weigh less than this guy. So I would need a lighter weight, lighter than 270, if I only want 15% of tackles to weigh less than that person. Anyways, the answer is 238.91 pounds, if you care about units, which I don't. How likely is it that an offensive lineman weighs less than 220 pounds? Well, now if I wanted to, I could count up and down by the standard deviations, although you don't have to. 240, 210, 180. Uh, I'm just going to throw 220 in my picture. Shade to the left of it. It's asking me to find this area. To find this area, it's normal CDF. Anytime you're trying to find the area, it's normal CDF. We didn't try to find the area up here. The area was given in the problem. This 15% was given in the problem. That is the area. Sorry, that's annoying. I just get frustrated. I know students never get that. It's not true. Students often struggle with this, and I feel bad for them, so I'm just trying to help. My four arguments, lower bound, upper bound, center, spread. As we talked about in the normal CDF video, if you're missing a lower bound, put in a large negative number. In this case, zero would have been fine for my lower bound, but you have to be careful. Sometimes that can give you an incorrect answer. So rather than thinking about a lineman can't weigh a negative amount of pounds, just always put in a large negative number if you're missing a lower bound. Trust me. Go into distributions, grab the normal CDF function. My lower bound is not given to me, so I could use scientific notation or negative 9999. Either way is fine. Just some large negative number. My upper bound is 220. My center is 270. And my spread is 30. I'll hit paste, it'll spit out a number. That number is the area, which either gives me the probability that one offensive lineman weighs less than 220 pounds, as it was asked here, or it tells me what percentage of all offensive linemen weigh less than 220 pounds. About 5%, 4.78%, I guess. If you're formatting it as a percentage and rounding to two decimal places. Cool, that's my answer. Done. What's the absolute minimum you need to know to differentiate these two functions? That's the hardest part for most students, is to tell the difference between the two and the pressure of a test in some word problem you've never seen before. My advice to you, draw the pictures first. 
always draw the pictures. If you already know the area, you're going to be using inverse norm if you're told the area. If you're trying to find the area, you're going to be using normal CDF. And if you have a bit of an understanding about what the area represents, it'll make it a hell of a lot easier for you to figure out if you're already told the area or if you're trying to find the area. And so here is that statement on what the area represents for like the fifth time. And you got to be getting really sick of this. But I'd rather you be really sick of it than not understand it in the first place. So if you're given the value of either of these two things, you're using inverse norm. If you're asked to find the, val the value of either of these two things, you're using normal CDF. That's all I got.